Remedy is one of my favorite studios. They tend to have a large turnaround with releasing games, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. While I would prefer more games from them, I do enjoy the interesting games that they come up with, and they're extra special because of when they come around. Like many of their fans, my first introduction to Remedy was with their first Max Payne game. It combined John Woo-like shooting action with a crime noir story. It very much delivered. When you look back at the behind the scenes of the game, you will continually be impressed with what Remedy had to work with and how they achieved and made a name for themselves with that first game. For me, the sequel improved on many areas of that first game. These games had addictive and stylish combat without having any of the modern progression systems like experience points or customization. The gameplay centered on different shooting encounters and maximizing your slow-mo. It had great gameplay for the player to enjoy and it was surrounded by an interesting story. The same can be said for their next game with Alan Wake a supernatural mystery with a focus on light and dark mechanics within the shooting action. Alan Wake is probably my favorite game from Remedy, and like many, I hope to see a proper conclusion to that story. My point with all of this is to both show how Remedy would make third-person shooters, but there's also an interesting element that they weave into them, whether it's the slow-mo mechanic of Max Payne, the light mechanics of Alan Wake, or the time abilities of Quantum Break. And you're not playing a Remedy game right if you do not try to interact with most of the objects within the environment. These types of things almost turn into hidden and fun things that you can find within their games, and they turn into fun interactions or just references to their prior games. Remedy is a developer that I adore. I'm always interested when they make a new game. I was excited to hear about Control and see what interesting mechanics they would come up with and where the story would take me. My hope was that this would be another Remedy experience that would fit nicely in their impressive portfolio. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my review for control. Control's combat revolves around using supernatural powers and weapons against your enemies. Within the game, you essentially have one gun, and can change that into different forms for different uses. You start out with the handgun form, and then you can later upgrade it to the shotgun, machine gun, or other forms. The shooting works a bit different than you would initially think in that once you use up all your ammo, you need to wait for your gun to recharge before you can go back to firing. There isn't a traditional ammo system here. It kind of reminds me of the heating system from the first Mass Effect. The shooting itself is very fun, and to be expected from a Remedy game. The effects from the gunfire along with the impact shots from your weapons are really satisfying. Weapons are not the only thing you have within your arsenal. You'll be able to grab many objects within the environment and throw them at your enemies. This is extremely fun and very easy to pull off. You can select items you want to specifically grab or the game will just grab the closest thing to you. Since the combat encounters can get really chaotic, this is most appreciated. Throwing objects at enemies is really satisfying since they react to that object. Even when you're pulling an object towards you to be able to then throw it at an enemy, that can then hit an enemy and cause them to fall down. You gain other powers as well to help you in exploration and combat. You can create a shield that will block enemy fire and you can be able to levitate for a short period of time. The powers and your weapons creates the best part of the game. The combat is loads of fun. Another thing to keep in mind is how you gain back your health. You will only regenerate a very small amount of your health and you'll be reliant on health pickups. Each time you kill an enemy, they will drop health for you. So there isn't really an option for you to run and hide and then regenerate all your health. You need to adapt and figure out the best enemies to take out first and which ones are easier to defeat to be able to give you quicker health. There's a lot of on-the-fly assessing of the battlefield when you're in a fight. 
you have a good amount of options for you in combat and the variety of enemies keeps things interesting. You will fight enemies that will float above you, ones that will explode when they get close to you, normal soldiers, heavies, and more. There's a nice variety here and the game definitely wants you to learn the different enemies and prioritize the different ones to be most efficient in fights. I do want to make note that you will be in combat a lot of the time, so you're really going to be able to enjoy the systems here. With her previous game, Quantum Break, I felt like an action sequence would end right as it was getting started. That isn't the case with Control. There's one section towards the end of the game that has a new song playing from Poets of the Fall and has some of the best visuals within the game, and it's also one of the best set pieces within the game as well. Lastly, there is a sort of loot system to the game. As you defeat enemies, they will drop different materials and currency for you to be able to upgrade your weapons or get new mods for your guns or yourself. You'll also earn skill points as you complete missions and can level up different skill trees. These upgrades are what you would expect and there really isn't anything new going on here with these particular systems. It's like... We live in a room. And there's a poster on the wall. We stare at it and we think that's the whole world. The room and the poster. The picture's something nice. A landscape, a famous person. Like in that movie, what is it called? The prison movie. The room's a cell, and the picture, it's different for each of us. It can be beautiful or terrible. I do want to comment a little bit on the story, but don't worry, there won't be any spoilers here. At first I was enjoying the narrative. It drops you into this confusing world and you're not really certain what's going on. The game gives you some information throughout, but I do think this mystery could have benefited from having some well-executed twists. Things are revealed with very little weight or impact. Also, Control lacks memorable characters, especially with our main hero, Jessie. I couldn't really tell you much about her and I wish the game did a better job at developing her. I enjoyed the weirdness of the story and I wanted to see how it ended, but I found the gameplay to be the main reason I pressed on. I very much enjoyed the nods to Alan Wake and I wonder if the two universes will meet in one game in the future. I also enjoyed how during conversations you can talk with different side characters and ask them a bunch of things and you'll also get the perspective of what Jesse is thinking in her head. Faith, call me Jesse. Okay, Jesse. I'm Emily. Look, somehow, this hostile force, this hiss, that works. Somehow the hiss managed to infiltrate the building without any warning. And just like that, my name for it is official. The hiss. Like the sound of poison gas leaking in. We're in full lockdown. Overall, I like the elements of the story, but this is not my favorite narrative from Remedy. I do need to praise the attention to detail from Remedy. The destruction within this game is so impressive. It feels like almost anything can break or crumble and it's so awesome to watch. Along with this, I like the little extras that you can find within the game like the radio talk show, the live action video, or the weird puppet show. Now while I found the combat to be really great, I did have some flaws within the game that continually hurt the experience. The biggest one that I experienced was the lag within combat. I played Control on my base PS4 and there were many situations where the game would crawl as I was trying to enjoy the combat. It got so bad in many sections that it was hard to properly play the game. I do commend Remedy for really pushing the destruction and detail within their new engine, but this poor performance on the base consoles is unacceptable. The game apparently runs better on the pro versions of the consoles, but the game should also run well on the base game systems. It honestly feels like no one tested the frame rate on the base systems, especially with how bad it gets at times. And this can also cause some of the harder fights to feel cheap, since many of the enemies can kill you in a few hits, so then you're fighting them, but you're also fighting the game itself because of the lag. It would be one thing if there were only a handful of situations that had this lag issue, but many sections have this issue. Apparently Remedy is working on a patch and I hope it's released soon. The other issues were minor ones in comparison to the frame rate. I found the soundtrack to be lackluster considering the prior soundtracks from Remedy's games. There's a few sections where if you miss a jump you're gonna instantly die. 
And the last issue I had was how the checkpoints worked. There are set points that you unlock for fast travel and they're also used for checkpoints. If you die within an area, your progress and items are saved, but you need to then run back through the area to get back to where you died. It feels tedious to need to do this. While the bad frame rate was a big issue for me, I still did enjoy the game. Overall, Control is one of 2019's most unique games. The story sells a decent mystery that is backed up by great gameplay. When the frame rate was stable for me, I very much enjoyed throwing objects at enemies and shooting them with my gun. Exploring some of the environments was enjoyable with finding the secrets and different easter eggs. The destruction is very impressive and it's something I hope they use in their next game. I hope they fix the frame rate issue soon. If you only have a base system, then I would recommend and wait for a patch before you buy this game. If you're playing on the pro versions or a good PC, then I would recommend you check this one out.